Hi there, this is Lee. Welcome to the first video in what I hope will be a long series of C Sharp programming videos. Now we'll do separate videos on different programming languages, I think, uh, but to start out with, we're going to do C Sharp. The reason why I've picked C Sharp is because Windows 8 is out and Windows works with C Sharp very well and you can do a lot of powerful things with C Sharp. And it, it's a very quick language to develop in, it's got a lot of tools out there and a lot of libraries that are publicly available so and it's also my strongest language so out of all the languages I could have picked I think C Sharp would probably be the most beneficial to everybody. I mean there are going to be the Linux heads out there who are going to or oh, and Mac for that matter who are going to say that C Sharp's a dead language or <laughs> that it's not a good language to pick for programming um, but as I say I'll get onto others like Java and possibly Python uh, all in due time so what I'm gonna do first of all is open Visual Studio now this currently is Visual Studio 2012 and it looks vastly different from the last few Visual Studios 2005 and 2008 look fairly similar to each other 2010 was a little bit different from then and then 2012 was a almost a complete overhaul of the graphical interface uh, now everything you see here besides this toolbar just here is stock now I've got this toolbar here because I've got git and I will possibly be doing some uh, videos on that later on but for now uh, we're just going to show you basically the way to get around Visual Studio now, the way you interact with Visual Studio hasn't changed much over the years and um, what I've done here currently is gone on to a project that I've started called Tutorial C Sharp as you can see here on the right hand side I've got program.cs I'm just going to open that whilst I'm explaining something so when you get into Visual Studio you will be greeted with a welcome screen the welcome screen is fairly nice and there's a lot of helpful things on there such as news feeds from latest development uh, news and there's also the project management bit but we're going to ignore that welcome screen for now and I'm going to show you or tell you rather how to open a new project so we go to file new and then project you can also press control shift and n as depicted here on the right hand side of each context menu so you click project and then what I've picked here is console application I've named it tutorial C sharp in the name and as I type this you'll see it appear in the solution name in the bottom so what you can do here in the solution name is name it different to your individual project name so if you were creating a large application which had several projects in there you could name the solution the application name that you want to emit and then the name of the individual project would be what that function of the project actually is so for now we're going to leave that blank and I'm going to put tutorial C sharp in the name and leave that in solution and then I just clicked OK you will then be greeted with this which is where I will begin so as you can see here there are a few lines already in for us there's our using statements up here at the top there's a namespace declaration and a class and static void main I'll go back to the top for a second because you may already be confused or you may not know what these using statements are so if you've done any other programming at all you'll probably know about um, external references or even class libraries and things like that that's all these are really uh, system is just a big holder of a lot of base types and classes and I'll get onto what types and classes are in a second but for now um, all you really need is this using system and we can go ahead and delete all these others 
because we don't need them just yet. So once we've got just our using system, um, it's easier to see, and then it'll also provide us all the basic functionality that we're going to need out of our simple little console application. Moving down here to line 3, we can see the namespace tutorial C sharp. Now, usually, you leave this as it is, and when you create a subfolder, it will do a dot on the end of this and then your subfolder's name. Now that's perfectly fine for now, um, we, we don't want to change this just yet, but namespaces are effectively just like this using statement. So if I were to have a different namespace with a different name, um, I could use using tutorial C sharp in the top of my code, or anywhere in the code for that matter, but it's usually better at the top. So I could do using tutorial C sharp and then I'd have access to class and any other uh, public classes that will go into tutorial C sharp. Coming down to classes, you've heard this word bounced around quite a lot already. Um, if you don't know what classes are already, they're basically they are objects. Objects are things, well that's just it, they're things. You can do stuff with them, uh, you can do stuff from them, and they form the basis of object-oriented programming. Uh, for our simple little application for now, we don't really need to worry what class program means. But we'll keep it in there, uh, because that's what's required really for this program to run. Coming down onto this next one, and it looks a slight bit more complicated than all the previous lines, uh, because there's a lot going on here. So first we come to main, void main. Now void means that the method doesn't return anything. And what a method is, is a block of code which can be called from a class. Now if that sounded confusing, don't worry. We'll come on to this a lot later on. For now, just accept that you need it. Static means that we don't have to initialize the class before we call it. And as before, don't worry if you don't know what that means, it's fine, we'll come on to that later on. One important thing that we do need to know what means here is string. A string is a type. Types are ways of manipulating data. Uh, we can have several different types. There is int, as you can see here, there are several different types of integer. Uh, we can have string, as seen above. We can have bool, which is a boolean value. And there are many others that we'll come across in a short space of time. Uh, string here. Uh, args, sorry, string args is a string array as depicted by these square brackets here. Now arrays are basically collections of types, so args may hold one or more strings, or maybe not even any. Now this can get complicated, so feel free to pause the video and go back over anything I've said. Uh, if you want to continue, then uh, we shall move on. Now what I've done here is I've just pressed enter and gone onto this new line, which you can see what new line I'm on by this black line going across the screen. In here I'm going to type console.read no write line. Hello world exclamation mark. I'm also underneath going to put console.read, open brackets, close brackets, semicolon. Now, these last three things that I typed, open brackets, close brackets, and semicolon, will cause you a lot of headache if you're just starting out. If you're forgetful, like I am, then sometimes you won't put them in. And believe me, your program will be quick to pick that up. 
that Visual Studio itself is pretty clever about it and it will tell you straight away if you've not put in the brackets or semicolon. What these do is effectively the semicolon ends a line of code or a certain portion of code. So you can see I put it after this right line method here and that ends this line or this small block of code here. Now you may be wondering what this is, console.writeLine. Console here is our class. As I said earlier, you don't really need to worry about what this is just yet. But if you're curious to know, uh, Google will tell you, first of all, probably better than I can, just now. But you'll notice that it's not initialized at all. Uh, if if you know programming, it's not been initialized at all. So console dot right line here. So right line is similar to our main method here. It's static. This right line method can be called from anywhere, and we don't have to initialize this console. So this is what is meant by a static method. Uh, this right line here is the method, and as you can see by our main up here, it's got brackets. and then something inside the brackets. You don't always have to have anything inside the brackets, but in this case we have. So in there we've put a string as depicted by the string opening and closing with the double quotes. It's important that you do the right kind of quotes because different kinds of quotes will give you different things. But just remember that double is for a string, single is for a character. We'll come on to that in a bit. The console.write line here is writing hello world to our console. And when we run this application, you will see that the console prints hello world! Exclamation mark. So what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is run the program. You can do that by either pressing the start button here or going to debug, start debugging. If I click build, you get all the various build options. Now if you've got it set up correctly, which you should have out of the box, is when you press start debugging or F5 or even this button here, it will build this current version of the code anyway. So you don't need to go into this build or press F6. So for now, we're just going to click this button here, this green start button and it will run and as you can see it has printed hello world hello so as soon as I press anything I'm going to press enter for now it will close the application and that's because after we've read anything from the console there is no code left to read so we're done and we exit and that's been the first little tutorial or first little uh, glimpse into the world of programming if this has been too quick, too slow, or not enough information for you, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and see you next time.